My story of how I got sick in the first place is entirely why I ended up in this profession, you know, versus becoming a medical doctor, which is what I always thought I would be when I was a kid. I always had that deep love for medicine. But in this video, I thought I would share a 10 year update or so regarding my own health and those symptoms that I initially sought out all these doctors for and I'd spent tens of thousands of dollars, went all over the world, and then ultimately found myself seeing a traditional Chinese medicine doctor that helped me more than any specialist I had seen. So let's jump in. We'll give you a little update as to my own health journey, part two, after 10 years, what I use to maintain good health in terms of traditional Chinese medicine formulas, and a bit of just a different sort of off the cuff approach to this video here today. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump back in here to my story, part two. You know, when I was a little kid, my main obsession was the stories of these old mystics and holy people. I read this book that was called The Way of Weird. Weird, why? W-Y-R-D, fate, or like this Indo-European Anglo-Saxon shamanism. And in this story, there's a Christian monk who is going on some mission somewhere. And I think he falls and he gets injured. And he's revived by an Anglo-Saxon shaman, like a traditional druid. And the Indo-European shaman gave him this herbal formula and this elixir because he was a traditional healer in his tribe and in his society. And this began this sort of initiation with this healer and with this guide. And it ultimately led to this man leaving the priesthood because he went on this new saga of mysticism and medicine and herbal medicine and becoming basically a holy man, right? Like in the ancient times, the physician, it was like the vizier physician. Vizier meaning sort of like a Merlin-like like figure, an advisor to the king who was one part mystic, one part physician. And for me, you know, as a kid, these were always the people that I was looking to be apprenticed with. And in reality, what I learned is I was probably trying to become this kind of person. That was probably my deepest childhood calling was somewhere between the mystic and the holy person and the physician. And so it is no surprise I ended up in a medicine that is not just about giving pills and procedures and that's considered medicine, but is looking at things, yes, from a procedure and pharmacological point of view, but also on a much deeper level, right? The original functional medicine level and a spiritual level. When I was young, I always had wanted to be some kind of doctor and it was clear I was going to be in some kind of integrative medicine profession. But as soon as I started experiencing digestive problems, I first started by seeing, you know, a registered dietitian, nutritionist, that was a referral from my general practitioner. You know, I actually quite liked my general medical doctor. He wasn't someone I disliked or distrusted. He was a good guy. He didn't try to convince me that my ideas were wrong. He just said, you might want to try this. And if no luck, let's refer you to the next person. So the dietitian and nutritionist weren't very much help. You know, they said, you're very constipated. Why don't you add more fiber? That just made me have the most severe abdominal pain of my life. So bloated, I couldn't even sleep. So as a result, I was referred to the GI specialist. And the GI specialist talked to me for literally five minutes. And he said, you know, sounds like you have IBS and then scheduled me for a colonoscopy and that was all I heard from this guy. Now, because I really didn't trust his advice because it didn't resonate, he was the specialist, but I also had a gut instinct that he was wrong and I was right and I'm glad I trusted my gut because I canceled that colonoscopy and my saga with conventional medicine and also my passion for it died that day because how could I in good faith endure the cognitive dissonance of going into a profession that helped me so little, at least in regard to this issue. I felt very lost because that disappointment with conventional medicine also sort of shattered my dream because now, you know, I was in a biology, environmental science and a pre-med degree. And now I knew I couldn't be a conventional doctor. I just knew I wouldn't be happy. I knew there would be thousands like me and I knew I would never be doing the work that I felt I was really born to do. And I knew there would be a longing for something else that I felt was a little deeper, or at least was integrative in nature. You know, I shared that chance encounter that I had with my first mentor, Jacques, this Frenchman who was a, a chance referral from a guy in a coffee shop. The guy in the coffee shop I bumped into said, you know, hey, you, you told me you've had some digestive problems. Well, I have a autoimmune disease and I developed a rare reaction to a medication and developed autoimmune hepatitis, where now my body's attacking my liver. And he said, the specialists have been so useless, I've been going around the world trying to see anyone who could help, 
and I saw this guy around the corner, acupuncturist, and he does herbs. And while he didn't cure me, he clinically got me better results than every specialist I have seen, even at the Mayo Clinic. So he's like, I don't know if the guy can help you, but I would definitely recommend going to at least see him to see what he can do. And if you've seen my other story videos, you know that first herbal formula he gave me, a formula from the year 900 AD, got me better clinical results than any intervention my Ivy League trained GI specialist gave to me or tried. And man, when that hit me, I felt a combination of relief because now I was suddenly having some solution to my problems. I was also feeling anger because how is it possible that I'm sure if I asked my GI about what he thought of TCM, he's, he would have said it's a bunch of bull, garbage, pseudoscience, completely fake, dangerous herbs that could harm your liver, right? All the propaganda, that really comes from ignorance. Lots of my medical friends who are MDs, they tell me they want to learn what I've learned, but they mostly learn procedures and medications because that is primarily what they do day to day. The strong opinion that a physician with a God complex will issue to a patient, if the person is not discerning or is fearful or trusts authority, they'll just take that for face value. Thankfully, I'm not that person, so I didn't. But I learned where some of these symptoms were coming from, and I was baffled that this formula that was 900 years old, this guy didn't even specialize in formulas, he just knew which general formulas to use, got me better results than this GI. And I thought, if all the GI did was give me this formula, he would have saved my life and changed my life. Forget the colonoscopy, endoscopy, the antidepressant he wanted to give me for my gut, gaslighting me into thinking I'm stressed. I wasn't stressed, right? At the time, anyway. If all he knew was to give me this patent formula, it would have changed my life, and I would have saved tens of thousands of dollars. But that's not the way my story went. And such is true of a lot of the stories of these wounded healers through history. There has to be that descent into hell, as Carl Jung said, before your branches can reach back up towards heaven. So as I got better and better and better, you know, one of the first questions I asked my mentor, which is also something a lot of my patients ask me, is do I have to take this forever? Let's say they come in and they have lots of bloating and SIBO or gut issues, or they've had chronic acid reflux for 10 years, and within three months we have it 80% resolved, even when they're eating a bad diet. You know, when you talk about healing, we're talking about treating a pre-existing constitution. Constitution is this word that we use as a surrogate for genetics. And the reason why we use it is that there's a whole cluster of signs and symptoms and patterns that you may be having that are more related to your genetic makeup. You know, for example, in my family, digestive issues, asthma, allergies, eczema run the family. It doesn't matter how healthy of a diet you eat, you have a tendency towards one of those problems that just the inflection point is to what degree of severity will you have those symptoms. If you're working a lot, doing a high stress job, or something else, eating very poorly, or drinking a lot of alcohol or coffee, you may see those symptoms flare up a lot. But the symptom is, first and foremost, a genetic tendency. Just like, you can't, there's nothing you can do to control your height. You can't control your eye color. And even, you can't even control your body type. If you're thin and wiry like your mom, you're thin and wiry like your mom. That's your genetic set point. If you're pear-shaped like your mom, you're pear-shaped like your mom. If you're a big stout guy who eats like a horse, you're a big stout guy that eats like a horse, just like his dad. Genetics are real, which is why animals are a certain body type and certain size, and humans are a certain body type and certain size. But when it comes to healing, this idea of do I have to take this forever comes down to a number of factors. So for example, I have a tendency, constitution, towards digestive problems. That will always be with me throughout my life. Just like I'm never not going to be six foot two, I'm never not going to have brown eyes. I will always have this tendency throughout my life. So what that means is that, do I have to take those Chinese herbs forever? No, but what I do have to be paying attention to is my lifestyle, especially my diet and stress levels, because those affect my digestion more than anything. While I have higher stress because I'm self-employed and I have a, a fulfilling but stressful profession. I have to be extra careful because once every few months, I do take Chinese formulas for about a month for my digestion. That depends how much I eat out, how heavy I eat, how stressful my clinic has been, and all of these other factors. Do I have to take something forever depends on how good of a life, how disciplined you are. So for example, the patient comes in who comes in with acid reflux and let's say 
they eat an okay diet. Let's say they're not coming in with like a really horrible standard American diet. This person, we can resolve their acid reflux in three to six months. We can functionally cure it, right? I don't know if legally I can say that, but clinically it is true. They won't have acid reflux anymore 95% of the time. Maybe they'll have like two days per month. But they can go right back to having a business dinner every night and drink three glasses of wine, have a huge bowl of pasta, spaghetti bolognese, and then a tiramisu dessert, and they're gonna be back in my office in three months or six months. No question. Because you are deregulating the organs that I just fixed with this formula. You can be someone who has had insomnia and anxiety, and then via living a good lifestyle, living a good regular exercise lifestyle, stopping coffee for maybe a couple weeks or a couple months, and working on your stress levels and your work levels, you can go down to, let's say, 90% of the time, you don't really have that symptom anymore. But it will come back if you go back and do the opposite thing. When people say, do I have to take this forever? That depends. It depends on how you live. Can you make your life your medicine? This is gonna be one of my next books, Making Your Life Your Medicine, because it's so important. But can you make your life your medicine? So I know the two things that will bring back that constitutional Achilles heel are how much I eat out, because it's naturally higher calorie and I naturally overeat more, and my levels of stress. So if I'm taking time to have proper meals, if I'm taking time to relax, I'm taking time to cook, if I do those two things, usually I won't have to take formulas. How do I actually treat these ongoing issues though with people? Just like my own ongoing issues. Typically, we talk about this genetic weak link, which is your Achilles heel. Some people, it's their digestive system. Some people, it's the nervous system. They get more anxiety, elevated heart rate, palpitations, and sleeping problems. Some people get more headaches and more migraines under stress. Other people get bowel changes under stress, IBS-like issues, or they get flare-ups of psoriasis or skin rashes or eczema. Learning what your pattern is. What is the main sign or symptom that is the primary one indicating that you are moving in that zone of out of balance? And the way that I treat ongoing issues for myself, the primary way that I do it is most of the time, once per season, I will take a traditional herbal formula for about a month. So if there is a flare up of let's say bloating, I'm feeling indigested all the time, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of even acid reflux, means I'm eating too late at night, or even that last meal at night is just too much and too heavy. In which case, what I'll do is I'll take a formula for one month. I'll either take one of my favorite formulas like Ban Chia Xie Shen Tang, Ban Chia Purge the Heart Decoction. This is a common formula that I use when I'm more prone to getting, you know, going for business dinners where the dinner is either too late or it's too heavy or it's too tasty and I'm naturally overeating. And I know 100% of the time that I do that, I'm going to sleep terribly. So I'll take about six or seven grams of this formula dissolved into hot water before bed or after the meal. Take it like a, an enzyme blend or a digestif, for example. Another formula that I often take is one called Li Zhong Wan, regulate the middle pill, or another one called Liu Jun Zetang, six gentlemen decoction. These formulas typically fall into the category of spleen and stomach deficiency, pancreatic enzyme deficiency, and typically people here have low stomach acid. So typically you don't have good appetite, you typically get loose stools, you're prone towards bloating and getting a food baby, and people will often say, it feels like food is just really sitting in my stomach. So these formulas are really, really commonly used for that pattern. And I use them when I notice I'm either not taking time for proper meals, I'm eating at my desk or eating between patients, I'm rushing too much in my day-to-day -day life, or overall the problem is I'm just doing too much. I'm working too much, so I'm always in a stressed out zone and I'm really not taking time for real meals. Now, finally, one other practice that I do is Qigong. So Qigong, sometimes translated as breath work or energy work, one of the main reasons I use Qigong or seated meditation is to become aware of what I call the subtle body. A lot of the reason why we end up getting sick is that we miss the little signs and symptoms of the body moving towards illness and disease. For example, you might notice yourself feeling a little short of breath, or you're noticing a little bit of tightness in the chest, or what you're noticing is a little more fatigue than normal, or a little more indigestion, or you're noticing a lot more anxiety, or there's maybe a little bit more insomnia than normal. You can't fall asleep, you're waking in the night, you're noticing you're just really not feeling normal how you typically do. Now, these little signs and symptoms are the precursors to much bigger illnesses and diseases. Gallbladder issues, acid reflux, that's a real problem, uh, IBS, migraines, severe clinical anxiety or clinical depression or clinical severe insomnia. 
And if you can learn to recognize these little signs and symptoms before they're too much, you can really learn to know exactly what I can do to prevent this and prevent myself from getting ill. In doing Qigong, the combination of the breath work and closing your eyes and trying to pay attention to your body is primarily there designed to help you sense the subtle body. Because lots of the times we lack the self-awareness to spot those little symptoms. We're moving too fast. We're not slowing down. We're not taking time in solitude or in the quiet to see how am I actually feeling. And you realize, wow, I'm actually way more tired than I thought, or way more bloated and indigested than I thought, or I feel terrible, way more anxious, or way more depressed than I thought. So practicing Qigong is a way to help sense the subtle body. These are some of the practices I've been doing, guys, and some of the little revelations that I think have helped me quite a lot. And again, the evolution of learning to sense that subtle body and learning what is the limit? How hard can I work? What should I be eating? How should I make my life my medicine? These are ultimately the biggest lessons that are the most important, you know, on your actual healing journey itself. I hope this helps you my little 10-year update. Day-to-day, -day, I don't really have health problems with the GI, but I often take a formula once every quarter or every six months to keep my GI strong and functioning well. I hope that helps. Don't forget, I work with a limited number of new patients every month in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. Info right below or dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. And I have a related video on this topic right here.